I shot a film. I wrote and directed a short film. Uh, we made it about a year and a half ago and finished it in the beginning of 2017. And it has started on this little journey of film festivals. And uh, we've been all over the world, really, with, with it so far. We were in at the Cannes Film Festival and in Rome and in Madrid and in England and all over the United States. And, and we're not only celebrating Carson McCullers' 100th anniversary, uh, who is the writer of this particular story. It's called A Tree, A Rock, A Cloud, a favorite story of mine since I was 21 years old. Um, I read, I think, all, everything Carson McCullers has ever written. And, and this particular story, while I absolutely adore her other work, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, Member of the Wedding, Ballad of Zach Cafe, this little story jumped out at me and I it stayed with me my whole life and I I always imagined if I was ever going to shoot a first film I would want to make this story and put this story on film and uh, Jeffrey DeMunn who is plays the main role in the film is an actor who I've known for 40 years and and uh, I I imagined him in this role when he was 40 years too, too young to do it. And so the timing was perfect because he's now the perfect age to do it. And um, uh, so we collaborated on, on that and he plays the main character in the story, one of the main characters. You wrote the screenplay as well, right? I did, I did. Although, you know, there is some uh, inventiveness on my part in the story, but I very, very much wanted to make this particular film as an homage to the story and to Carson McCullers because uh, I think it's a perfect jewel of a story as it is. And even though I do elaborate a little bit, I, I create a, a, a beginning for the film that is not necessarily what in the story, isn't in the story. Um, it, it, I wanted her story to be th there at, this, at the center of it. I didn't I didn't fall in love with the story because I had a desire to change it. I, I think it's perfect just the way it is. Had you always had an interest in directing? I mean, I think people, obviously, they know you as an actress, but uh, this is your first go at it. Was this, or was it just because of this project? Uh, like, you know, or had you always had an interest in, you obviously had an interest in the work, but as directing as a whole, and this was your opportunity to, to do that with a piece that you very much love. Well, when I first started working in the theater, which was back in the early 70s, um, I worked with theater companies and I directed them. And then as I sort of became more and more uh, immersed in the theater and started to get opportunities to work in film, it became somewhat clear to me that I was going to have to choose at that time because really, you know, you need to put your focus, it felt to me at the time, on, on one or the other. So I, I always knew directing interested me. I had done some as in my 20s. So I, I went back about 10 years ago and started directing in the theater. And, and it really becomes, I think, uh, a fascinating thing to do as an actor because there are, are always, particularly, I, I suppose, as you get older, but even when I was younger, there's always like gaps in which you're looking for a project and maybe not finding something that really intrigues you. And to be able to take on and be interested in a story, in a play or in a film that has no role for you but that you feel passionate about and really connect to, it just opens up your whole world of possibilities. So why not? I mean, in a way, if you always have to look for something that has a role for you, it's a, it's a somewhat limiting experience. Would you say that your experience having worked with uh, so many film directors, acclaimed film directors, Spielberg, Landis, uh, John Carpenter, uh, did that help you? Did you, you know, did you, uh, were you inspired by their experiences or anything? Did you have little takeaways from all of your, in putting it into your own work or anything like yes. that? Yes, I mean, I, I don't think there's been a director I've worked with that I haven't learned something very meaningful from and and 
a lot of very different things from different directors so that it becomes a kind of food you know you you just and and you know with actors as well you you're always in the process of learning and you're always taking in what you know how another person perceives how, how they're going to do something how they're going to work with actors how they're going to rehearse a scene how they're going to uh prepare and and um you know for me it was all like soul food you know i would just you know eat up and take in everything that was was happening in my, in my world sure. both in the theater and in and in film and i and i think you know you don't really sometimes realize what you've learned until you start putting it to practice and then you 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 realize you know a lot more than than you actually are aware of knowing um so people i i i wonder what it's like to live in the shoes of a of a person who is such an iconic character, Marion, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, you know, there's a lot of fans here at the station. I, 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 do you find yourself out on the street, uh, somebody recognizes you and says, it's Marion, do you have those experiences all the time, like in, in, in life? Or Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> and, they're, and they're quite wonderful experiences because I think Marion has become to a lot of women, young women, uh, a kind of very independent, tough spirit. You know, she's, she's like a woman who can take care of herself, a woman who's out in the world, you know, she's making a living drinking men under the table and she feels <laughs> wronged and she doesn't hesitate to clock somebody in the jaw. Not that I recommend that, <laughs> but she's, she's her own person. And um, I think that she's been very, I've been told, very inspiring to a lot of young women who look out into the culture for examples of that kind of strength and, and, and purposefulness, you know, uh, you know, that I'm, a, I'm your goddamn partner kind of quality. And uh, even playing field in the world. And, and uh, I think she's a beautiful example on the page and in the film of being that kind of woman, that kind of girl. And, and so I take great pleasure in people enjoying that aspect of the character, yeah. Um, so I hear you're getting honored uh, tomorrow, Saturday, um, at the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival and that they're going to have a toga party for you in Sorry. honor <laughs> of your role in National Lampoon's Animal House. Yes. What is that gonna be like? Have you dressed in a toga since the film? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, Katie didn't go to the toga party. Yeah, I, right. I think I, I, it's going to be hard to get me into a toga That's tomorrow. Uh, I, you know, Kate, and I, my excuse will be that Katie didn't go to the party. <laughs> Katie was very anti toga party. Yeah. Uh, Katie was the voice of reason. She was the one who was, you know, kind of. Right, right. Wake up! <laughs> this is your life. You know, she was uh, a, a kind of more uh, serious-minded young woman um, in many ways. But um, uh, so you know, we'll see. I, I think the toga party will be fun. Otis Day is going to be there, who is someone I have stayed friends with over the years. Um, he's a he's fantastic. Uh, it, Dwayne Jesse is his name, but he's taken on the name Otis Day. And um, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. Do you keep it? You, uh, you said you keep in touch with uh, Otis Day, and, and uh, do you keep in touch with a lot of your Animal House uh, co stars do. and everything through the I, years? Or? I do. Uh, probably more so than any other film I've made. Sure. We are, we kind of are a band of uh, old friends. And we're, it, this is coming on, believe it or not. 2018 is 40 years since the making of Animal House, and we're there's some big celebration in San Francisco that we're all going to in January, oh, and wow. John Landis will be there, and Tim Matheson, and cool. Peter Riegert, and Jamie Widows, and and it's very very sadly we lost Stephen First this last year, right. who was just a fantastic, wonderful man, and um, uh, but you know there's there's going to be a number of celebrations around and about. Uh, and you know sure. it's 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 a good group. I enjoy their company. I have to say. What if you had to pick one thing? What would be your greatest moment in your professional career that that you can kind of say, you know, 
maybe like, wow, I, I've, I've arrived? Oh, gosh. You know, for me, it possibly was when I debuted on Broadway, because which was in 1982, because I really had a great aspiration. You know, my aspirations, you know, as a young actor were really to make a living in the theater. That was my first and foremost hope. I really knew nothing about the film world. And and when I got the opportunities to work in film, I was very excited, but I was very much learning by the seat of my pants as I went. But when I did my first play on Broadway and uh, we went, we were at the Kennedy Center in DC before we came onto Broadway and uh, I was playing a very complex character. Uh, that was really, that was when I felt like I had arrived at this place I didn't really see beyond something like that. You know, that was really to debut in a leading role on Broadway. Wow. You right. know, that's how is, I felt. Is it hard to transition from theater to film, or, or does the theater experience help make the film experience? Because I know they're kind of different beasts, but... I like having both in my life. I mean, you, you know, I don't... I suppose if you've just worked for many, many years in film it can be tough to transition to theater i know some actors who but since i started out in the theater it's like i have an appetite for it it, it really means a lot to me it's 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 a, a different experience but a really good one for me so i really try to never be away from the stage for too long a period of time no matter if I'm working always in film, I will always try to take a little break and do a play. Um, it just, it grounds me. It gives me a, a really, there's something about, you know, when you're working eight hours a day, four days, four, uh, for four weeks, just rehearsing with your fellow actors and a director, you don't get a chance to work like that in, in, the, in film. film. Film moves along so quickly and that's that's its own kind of beauty, but there's a, a depth and a it's like a sculpting of a character. You know, you do eight performances a week. You're every perform people say to me, How do you do that over and over and over again? For for an actor when you're working on stage, it's never the same. Every night you're kind of starting from ground zero and creating the character all over again and finding new moments and building new understandings of the relationships and of the foundation of the character and I find it ultimately wildly fascinating to do. Uh, um, any career regrets? Is there one maybe thing uh, in life see. that you said, man, I wish I had done that when I had the chance or taken advantage of that? I can't, no, not really. I mean, I've turned down some films that have become very successful, but I knew when I turned them down why I turned them down. So, you know, it's, 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 there's success and there's success. I mean, I, success doing something that you don't necessarily respect is not really success sure. from my perspective, um, and, which is quirky in this business, but, but true uh, for me. And so, no, I don't think I've ever truly regretted something, you know, that I haven't done. Maybe, maybe there's been some conflicts and I haven't been able to do something I would have loved to do, something like that, but sure. yeah. Well, um, so everyone knows that Indiana Jones 5 is mm. going to happen, and I think a lot of people want to know, because we remember how the last one ended, Everyone wants to know, will Karen Allen be back? Will Marion return for Indiana Jones 5? Well, you can put me on the list of the people who want to know, because I'm <laughs> okay. one of them, and um, I'm staying very uh, listening, you know, my ear is to the wall, and, you know, they're very secretive. They sure. keep all these things very close to the vest, and uh, at some point... I, I, I hope I will know. I'm, I, obviously, at some point, I will know. They, they've announced it for July it's, 2020. 2020 yeah. So, you know, it's, it's getting somewhat close. I would say in the next year, at some point, I'll know one way or another. I'm very hopeful. I would love to be a part of the next one. 
I'd love to see what happens to Indy and Marion after marriage. <laughs> you know, we kind of leave them walking down the aisle after and um i think it would be you know really really fun to do another one and and uh so but i don't know i don't know if i'm been written into it or not and and uh, we'll, we'll time will tell i guess i wish wish i had more news but i don't <laughs> <laughs> right um i guess my uh, my only concluding thought would be um all this stuff that's happening in Hollywood right now, and we're seeing, it seems like every day now, I the know. dominoes are falling. Um, yeah. Just what are your thoughts? You don't necessarily have to say, I'm not asking if you had a personal experience or anything like that, but but just the overall, I guess, kind of pulse of Hollywood right now, It and, and, and obviously beyond in New York and, and everywhere, just this whole nation. Uh, you know, what are, what are your feelings about what's happening? Is, is this, in a way, is there good that comes out of the bad or? or I think there will be good that comes out of it. I'm, I think it is outrageous that all of these things have been going on. And um, it's not that we all, as women, haven't always been aware that these things can and do and might uh, happen. I, I think there's no w woman who hasn't on some level had to encounter at some point or another a potential situation that, you know, and, and, uh, and very difficult situations. So I, I think this is a fantastic sort of turning over of the, of the, you know, uh, lifting up of the you know, the, the dark place where, you know, people have been afraid to speak, people have felt alone, people have felt threatened in their careers or in their personal lives. And, and you know, sometimes it does take a village, so to speak, you know, for people to really feel safe to speak their truth. And, and it seems to just all of, you're right, it's like a huge, you know, uh, dominoes falling of, of people now wanting to speak out and wanting, you know, their truth to be told, and it's it's uh, pretty it's pretty horrifying actually when you when you read all these articles and see how many people have been affected by this and see how many people in power somehow feel entitled to, you know, behave in a abusive bullying way towards young women but also towards sometimes young men and and uh, people in very vulnerable situations yeah. um, so i'm i'm you know it, it's 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 terrible to read these stories and it's terrible to think that all this has been going on and and not been being talked about but i'm very glad that it's now out in the open